Different carabiner styles have different strengths and weaknesses. Let's talk about the added consideration of standing up to snow and cold if you are a high altitude or alpine climber. Hello, I'm Jason. Carabiners can freeze open or freeze shut, and that can be a problem. And certain types of carabiners are more prone to freezing than others. Which ones? Let's find out. When I'm up high, somewhere really cold, I want to be able to, I don't know, sit down on my pack and take a rest without worrying that if my gear is accidentally resting on the mountain surface, it will get frozen and become unusable. I want to be able to leave some of my gear outside of the tent so that I don't risk ripping my tent and not worry about it freezing open or shut if we get wind and spin drift. I want to be able to fix a line and leave a carabiner on the mountain for days and still be confident that I can retrieve it. I've led expeditions to the Great Ranges and have been on countless training climbs in extremely cold conditions as I got ready for those trips. And through all of that, I've made a lot of mistakes and learned some things. So when it comes to carabiners, I have some preferences. But to take this out of the fully subjective realm, and also to accommodate the proliferation of new designs and carabiners, I run a little experiment to see which carabiners return to working order best after being jammed with snow crystals at the gate closure. So on a windy, cold day, I took seven gate styles and jammed them into the snow with the gate open. I took a standard gate and wire gate, or non-lockers, and then five types of lockers. Lockers tend to have the most severe reactions to freezing in either a locked or unlocked state. I took a ball lock, which we open and close by pressing the ball, which allows the twisting sleeve to expose the nose of the carabiner and open. The sleeve only makes about a eighth of a twist as opposed to a quarter twist. That makes it a little easier to use with one hand. We get away with it because the ball adds an element of security. A twist lock, which is close to the same locking mechanism, but no ball. Because of this, it's usually a pull and a full quarter turn to reduce the likelihood that the sleeve will twist enough to expose the carabiner's nose, although it can still happen. A screw lock, which has a sleeve that needs to be twisted many times to be opened or shut. This makes it take purposeful repeated motions to open it yourself, but it can still be loosened through repeated jostling, especially if you have it screwing in the wrong direction. As they say, screw down, so you don't screw up. A slide lock, which has a latch that you can pull down and which locks over the nose of the carabiner, thus not allowing the gate to push in and open unless you pull the slide down. This is maybe the easiest to use, but also the least secure locking mechanism. And a twin gate, with a bent gate and a wire gate moving in opposite directions, like we would do when we make the equivalent of one locker out of two non-locking carabiners, by orienting them opposite and opposed. It can be a bit hard to use with the thickest gloves, although it is easy to use with light or medium gloves, but sleeves can be tricky with gloves too. So like I said, I open the gates and jam them in the snow, leaving them there for about 30 minutes. Here's what happened. It's been about half an hour with these carabiners jammed into the snow with the gates open. So let's see what we've got. First the ball lock. You can see the ball lock is frozen open and the uh, key is compacted with snow inside of it. I can get it to close if I work it, but the ball lock didn't, the twist on the ball lock didn't immediately cover. Now it has. And after a little bit, it seems to be functioning. Solid gate, completely frozen against the key lock. The gate itself is filled with snow and it's still not closing properly. After several attempts, the wire gate got snow. And after one flick, it seems to be closing properly. Screw gate. 
It's also frozen up against the key lock. Uh, will not close after several clicks. It is closing, but the screw is frozen and I can't turn it. And now we have the twist lock, similarly frozen open on the key lock and frozen filled with snow in the gate. After several flicks, it is almost closed, but it's still blocking the twist. And the twist is frozen. Slide lock, much like the uh, a uh, solid gate except one flick and now it is closed but the slide is frozen and with the double gate the solid gate is not closing it's filled with snow after three flicks it's now closing properly the wire gate is closing properly right away there's nothing frozen. The keeper gate is functioning. This one's, uh, this and the wire gate are functioning the best. If I were to generalize the findings, anything with sleeves got frozen in place to some degree. Anything with an H shape, so solid gates and the slide lock, got compacted with snow and wouldn't completely reclose. The wire gate did best, not surprisingly, and the double gate did next best. I think because the two gate directions meant that the overall smaller gate opening limited the amount of snow that could compact at the gate closures. So if you're willing to take the added weight of two wire gates and set them opposite and opposed, that may be your best bet for locking stuff in freezing snowy conditions. If not, maybe the double gate design would prove efficient. Now this particular carabiner is also a fixed orientation carabiner, which I wanted explicitly so that I could use it for tying in during glacier travel and not have to worry about it cross-loading. But if you aren't worried about that, there is a version in a more standard HMS design that actually has two wire gates, which, based on the results of this test, would likely be even better at resisting cold and snow. Of course, there are many more things to consider about carabiner design than just freezing, but for cold and snowy travel, I think it should be a major consideration. And this isn't scientific, it's an extremely small sample, but it confirms some common thinking alpinists have talked about for years. Thinking and showing, though, are two different things, so hopefully showing you some of the risks that come with different carabiner types in the unforgiving conditions of the cold alpine will help you think through what the right gear may be for you. Have you ever had a carabiner freeze open or freeze shut? Where were you and what kind of beaner was it? Let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching this video. Please like, subscribe, do all the things. For more information, you can go to our website at www.shortguysbetaworks.com. And if you are into videos about different types of gear and their pros and cons, check out this video about different kinds of ice axes. We'll see you next week and keep on getting more out of that big outside.